Okay guys, so what am I doing with all these videos? I'm just kind of laying down my life here. I'm laying down my life and I'm sitting and talking, okay? Because I've never really had a sit-down conversation to solve things with my husband and his parents, right? You just go on. They're not communicators. They don't like to sit and talk. They find it easier to go, nah, 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 nah. You need to sit down and talk about things with family. So I just had someone say, do you really believe that about one of my videos that men need rejection? This is my finger that I do. And I said, yeah, yeah, I do. When a man is rejecting you repeatedly and being mean to you, go ahead and reject him. Go ahead and give him a good dose of rejection. Put him in his place. Um, normally, though, to communicate and clarify a little further, normally there should be such a strong bond of love that you would not do that, okay? Christ loves us and accepts us just as we are. No strings attached. And this is how you want to be with a man. You want to accept him and love him exactly the way he is how God made him certain behaviors you won't accept but you want to accept him at his core and um, I think that was there for us for many many years um, one of the reasons why Ben married me is because I was very nurturing and very nice he would always say you are so nice there are times I can be unkind no question about it um, but for the most part, I like to be nice, and we are called to walk in the spirit as Christians and put on the armor, um, not just the armor, but the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, self-control, and there's one other one. I can't remember. So it says fruit, but it's one fruit, but there are many fruits. So um, I think it's peace. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. But when we're walking in the spirit and we're a light and filled with the light, we want to walk with abiding in the spirit, right? Because if you choose to go your own way and not walk in the spirit, you're going to produce uh, the flesh, which is, excuse me, anger, fits of rage, um, hatred, uh, tch, divisions, and malice, all this stuff. Those are the works of the flesh. So there's two systems in life. Just like in life, there's like a school system or you can homeschool or there's the welfare system or you can work. The spiritual side, there are two systems and you can either walk by the spirit or walk by the flesh. And when God breaks you repeatedly like he has done to me, we have a God who loves us and he disciplines us constantly. Okay, he loves us, but he disciplines us just like we had an earthly father who disciplined us. If we have an earthly father who disciplines us because he loves us, how much more is God going to discipline us in this life, right? So it talks about in scripture to take discipline because God loves us. So um, when you are disciplined, it should produce the fruits of righteousness after. So God has a way of working things in our life to correct us. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, for the most part, I mean, like I said, I love my husband. I always will but his behavior has been bad toward me and I don't have to put up with that. I, I don't put up with it from anyone. So why would I put up with it, especially from a husband? So one of the ways you can bring rejection to a husband is when you are busy, that is one way to bring rejection to him. Be like, I'm busy, I'm busy, got things to do when he doesn't want to pull his weight. And I think once I went like this to my husband, he was walking down the stairs and I think I he, he said something. And I'm like, look, I'm busy. And he didn't want to lift his side of the weight. And he had given me the silent treatment already repeatedly at the end, which one day I think it was three days of the silent treatment, which is mean, right? It's just mean. So you got to let your wife grow. You got to let her be able to work. You got to realize you can't always have all of her time 100% unless you don't want her to work then you can when my husband and i started off i was working three jobs and that tore down our marriage i would not recommend overworking in a marriage and then later on when we got this home i had to work and i had to work a lot in order to take care of this home but it's something that was needed and my husband you know later on when the rent went up by 300 bucks all at once i had to work even more so 
you know, I make time for my husband, no question, but you have to have the ability to communicate and say, not right now I'm busy, but later on, yes, let's plan and schedule a date night and have time together later. So I think my husband just wanted like all my time and, you know, I'm trying to keep the boat afloat during a crisis, trying to make sure my kids and I have a place to stay, trying to make sure he is okay, trying to do all this on top of us with a relationship where he had pushed me because he was stressed and I already forgave him, and then trying to deal with a landlord who was trying to sell the place and couldn't make up his mind. He just couldn't do it. So um, I have records showing, I probably could contact Mike DeCroto uh, Realties and get something about how my husband did not want to deal with him. Um, so I, I still love my husband, but he has put me in a position where he has lied about me. And if he'd like to sit down and talk sometime and come clean with some of these lies, now's a good time to talk before we go back to court. Because when I go back to court, I just had a, uh, a attorney, a woman attorney contact me and she's looking at not only 90 days of a continuance, but after court, we are looking at fighting for alimony if it's denied. So if Ben wants to, you know, some pressure has been put on him with his lies and if he wants to come clean and talk and start over and figure things out, he's welcome to. Otherwise, you know, like I said, he's lost me. He's lost me and it's his choice whether he wants to lose, you know, his wife which he pretty much you know I, I'm done unless he's willing to make some changes um, and that includes stop you know telling these lies about me so he wants to play we can play hardball I've got some other things up my sleeve I will be doing with him and you know he started this so I you know usually people don't do this stuff they sit down they have a conversation they say hey this, this is kind of bothering me, you know, can we talk about this? Don't put me in charge of finances and tell me to handle the finances. And when I go get COVID-19, you know, COVID declaration, don't tell me that I shouldn't be doing that. Don't be crying because you didn't want to do it. So, um, yeah, I do agree. Men need some rejection sometimes. And it's not that Christ is rejecting them because Christ will never reject them. My husband's a Christian. He's he's God's, okay? But he's very valuable before God, just like I am. But when they want to do certain behaviors, you know, be rejecting, you know, give them a good dose of it. And it's not condemnation. That's a whole different thing. That's like, oh my goodness, you know, you just, what a, what a, you know, not only an a-hole, but what a piece of crap. Not only that, but it goes even further. It goes to you know, hatred, and I can't stand you, and you just, you know, just treating someone with shame. That's not the same thing as giving somebody a good dose of rejection, okay? So, I mean, if your husband's tough enough to lay it on you, lay it back on him and see how it feels. And I know my husband does not like rejection. That's a weak point for him <clears throat> because he's had so much from his family. And it used to be a weak point for me. Um, last night I was talking to somebody about the rejection I've received from my family, a ton, a ton from my father and my mother and my family, a ton and a ton from his family. And it's really their problem. It truly is their problem. And it's a way to manipulate people. It's a way to be like, I'm gonna control you. And the way I'm gonna control you is I'm going to reject you. I'm gonna shame you. I'm going to condemn you. I'm going to talk about you. I'm going to tell the whole town about you. And that's what my uh, mother-in-law did. She went, she was working at Care Pharmacy at the Circle. Went and told Sheila Ordway all this bull about me. Went and told all these people this stuff about me. Whoever came into town, it seemed, she would talk about me. And then they went on social media. Well, you know, I'm on social media now and I give it right back. And with Donna last time on the Epsom Community Post, she's like, everyone's going to know how unkind you are. And I'm like, well, let's look at you. Let's look at the pot calling the kettle black. Is that how it goes? I said, let's look at you. You're the one who started this. So because she couldn't get her needs met, whatever those are, wanting to be worshipped, I guess, I don't know, 
She was appreciated. I laid down my life for my husband and his parents. I went over all the time. I gave them, you know, so much in life to look forward to when I brought over the grandkids. I mean, they were really happy to grandparent and were really happy and wanted us over all the time. And it came to a point, I'm like, no, you know, we're not coming over all the time. And if I didn't do what they wanted, I got it. And I got it good. So, um, you, the better thing would have been to sit down and say, hey, look, we miss you. We love you. We want some time with you. I'm sorry for calling you a gold digger. Let's deal with the money a different way. Uh, ben doesn't make much money. He had cancer. You know, I didn't care that Ben didn't make much money. Not at all. You know, if I really cared, I would have put my kids in daycare and went and worked. So I married my husband out of love. I didn't marry him for money. And uh, that's the story. I don't know what else to say here. <laughs> I've been talking a lot dealing with this. I don't think there's anything else I got to talk about with this. Um, except I did try to get work when I got over here. I just got a call. Um, I don't have a vehicle. So they're like, well, we probably can't hire you if you don't have a vehicle. This is cleaning. Last night I had an opportunity for work. I don't have a vehicle to go from house to house to house. So all I could do was get creative and say, look, call me back if you've got a specific place I can stay at and clean because I can bus over. And even then the bus over here leaves later than South Nevada. Since I've moved here from South Nevada, it's a little bit harder for me to get work. So, I mean, it's nice and comfy here. It's relaxing and I love it. But unless I'm working close by to some place, I mean, I can't get work. Speaking of that, someone did say call me back at three today so I do have to call them I almost forgot so I'm trying but the court's gonna see that I cannot really get work so my husband's going to have to provide because I can't get work and it's based on need and I do have the record showing that I worked in New, ha New Hampshire but there wasn't enough work in one place another one there was some harassment what was the other one one two I had three jobs lined up one was Duncan's. There wasn't enough work. Uh, Bank Chevrolet. I had to deal with some issues there. And there was another one. Oh, D'Angelo's did not pull through for me. It, I went in to do the paperwork. Didn't pull through. Went in to do the paperwork at Pizza Hut. Didn't pull through. And I could not literally survive without the work. So, um, so yeah. Now I will probably be talking to the realtor. And how Ben was there cleaning 127 New Hampshire Drive with me and to help clean up the place so Mike could sell it. So Ben was there.